Hello, welcome to Tony's Bonsai. I've got a really interesting project today which I've been planning for quite a while, so let's take a look at these. There's quite a famous American bonsai artist called Nick Lentz, I think he's dead now, but one of his compositions was a really wonderful tree which was like root over rock, but instead of over rock, he placed the roots over a statue. It was like a woman, a classical statue of a woman uh, lying on some sort of chaise lounge. And last year, Nigel Saunders of the Bonsai Zone, he was recreating this piece and I was fascinated. I thought it was great. Ever since then, I wanted to do my own version, but I wanted to do it with a twist. I didn't want to copy that. And I thought, I'd love to do it over something like this. So I've been buying these soapstone statues and I thought, wouldn't they be great for having the roots intertwined and working the way around the, the figure? I'm not going to do the big one today. I need to get the right tree for that. But this is almost like a practice video where I use this small privet and do root over statue on this. I personally love the sculptures of Henry Moore and Barbara Hepworth, both British sculptors. And they did, they weren't this kind of style, but they weren't too far off this. They were a bit more abstract. And this is based on The Thinker by Rodin. And I've always liked these kind of soapstone versions. So I think it'll look good. And I've been having a look around and eventually I found this plant, which I think could work really nicely. I was in one of my local nurseries a couple of weeks ago and I noticed this, it's a ligastrum oval lemon and lime. So it's basically a, a dwarf privet and it was 50% off. So £4.50. I couldn't resist, especially because I thought the base looked really good. It was quite tricky to find a plant for this because it has to be compact. I was thinking about a small juniper, that could work, but you know, it'd be no good having something like a big beech or, so, you know, I don't want like one long big trunk sticking up, it just wouldn't look right. The tree's got to almost work its way around the sculpture somehow with the roots weaving the way around and I think a privet will be a good choice, so I'm going to take this out of the pot. I wouldn't normally go for something like this, which is a kind of, I think it might be a, a variegated leaf. I'm not really keen on variegated leaves. However, with it being such an unusual composition around the sculpture, I don't think it'll matter. And if, it might even add a kind of surreal element to it, to the composition. So I'm quite happy with, with it being a, a non-conventional plant for bonsai. I've got a feeling I've got more than one plant in this and as previously I'm going to be as gentle as I can exposing these roots. It's got loads of roots all around the bottom because I want to maintain those roots to go around the soapstone. Hopefully so that I can create the piece as quickly as possible you know the less roots I have to take off the quicker this will grow and I don't think it'll be anything like as fast growing as a normal privet normal privets are absolutely bulletproof they're very very tough and hardy but this will be better because it's a dwarf variety so with the smaller leaves I just think it'll uh, I think it'll work well and, and it'll be in proportion my idea of the sculpture is that in the end, it'll look like, you know, maybe a 10 or 12 foot sculpture sitting in a, you know, some gallery, outside a gallery that's almost been left to be abandoned and, and a tree's grown around it, something like that. That's the kind of story that I'm sort of telling myself. Because with something like this, there has to be an idea in your mind as to the reason that the tree's on there and that's kind of how I'm thinking of it. This is going to take a while though now so I'll come back when I've got the soil off the off these roots. I've just quickly turned the camera back on because at this point I'm trying to separate these trees apart. I've got one tiny little one here and then I've got a sort of a medium and a large First one's out, that's a tiny little thing, but 
I'll pop that out. I'll pop that up just as a little plant on it in its own right. I think this one's almost ready to come out as well. There was about no. There were about I think there were sort of three or four plants to choose from. I selected this one because it seemed to have the best root base. Although at the time I wasn't necessarily thinking about this root over statue composition. I was just thinking how those roots would look good in a pot. And possibly when I look at them now, it might be this medium one that I end up using. And I might keep the, the larger one. There we go. That's coming apart. I can feel there's quite some quite large roots inside here, which is good. So we've got plenty of roots on this medium sized tree, which is good. I'll definitely get that potted up. Before I remove any more roots, I thought it might be a good idea to try and give them a wash. Wash some of that soil off. And this will hopefully let me see the structure of the roots with minimal disruption to them in terms of me scraping away with a chopstick. That was just planted in some kind of peat or compost. So that's all dissolved and come away very easily, which is exactly what I wanted. And I think I've got some really good root structure in here. This feels perfect for what I want for this, uh, for this project. And I was, you're never sure until you take a tree out what obviously what the roots are going to look like and this was one where I had no idea because I've never really done much work on privet and especially this dwarf variety I had no idea what I'd be sort of working with but this is this looks ideal I've done some untangling on these roots and they seem fairly flexible which is good my first decision is where do I want this tree to actually appear from Where's going to be the best place? I think it either has to come from this side here or this opening here at the front. So we could kind of have it there. But I think I like the idea of it coming a bit more from behind so that we can see the head and the arms with the roots coming and this almost coming and going over. So I think this point here is a good place for the tree to sit. And what I'm basically thinking of doing is, if I can, is taking these thicker roots and try to work out where I can kind of position them and bend them to sort of anchor this around this structure. I think it's going to be a challenge. Oh, this might work now. I can get those three through. There. Get these three through. There, like that. And that's a good position for the tree. I really like that. I do think that's a good spot. There, look at that sitting in there nicely. That's good. And then I can almost just see here, I pull this back root to come round here, round the body. I've got this back root already that comes over his shoulder. A thin one that can come around the back. And it's just these other two now. Hopefully I can sort of separate these two. And this one here, like that. My plan now is to use pieces of VET tape just like string really. I'm not particularly bothered if roots are not clinging directly to the sculpture. If they're almost coming down like aerial roots, to me that's fine. I'm quite happy with that.
I don't know how naturalistic this is, but that's not really my concern. When, when you're doing something like this, you know, you've got to say, you're creating, you're trying to create art, so you don't need to be worried by the conventions of bonsai or anything like that. You need that sort of hippie, hippie spirit. So this route that comes around the back here, I think it'll be good if I can just, just sort of tie that in like that there. Problem with using this vet tape is it does tend to sort of trap some of the roots. So perhaps there's a better material for a job like this. Perhaps I'd be better with raffia or something like that. But the problem with raffia then though is I don't know how long it'll hold. And really I want this to hold for, you know, sort of 12 months. I don't want this rotting away in, in three months. <laughs> Look at that. What? There. <laughs> nice. And it kind of looks like he's almost he's almost grasping onto the tree. Excellent. My plan for repotting it's fairly simple. I'm just putting some soil in the bottom. Pushing that down so that it's relatively secure. And then just Pouring the soil in. In time, hopefully, some of these roots up at the top here will thicken up. The finer stuff will sort of die, and the finer roots will form the way, work the way to the bottom of the pot. And this will become a bit more structured and not not just such a mass of fine roots. I've no idea really. It's very experimental stuff, this, for me. I'm just making sure that there's no big air pockets. That's all pretty good. What I'll do now is take just a cheap little plant pot. Cut the bottom off it. Like that. And then this can be yeah, wrapped around the tree like that. Yeah, that works well actually. I'll just remove a little bit of the soil around the edge so that I can bur bury it and mound up a bit of soil around it just to hold it in place. So, it goes round like that. I can settle it in and then this soil that goes around the edge now, will just hold it. And I can get all the soil in the top. Like that. And before I start chopsticking it now, I'll I'll just have to seal up this edge of the pot there. And I'll do that firstly by just 
putting a little piece of tape on and once that's held I'll go for it with a bigger piece and that should hold that on nicely I think I'll just go with one extra Better to be safe than sorry and all that. There, lovely. And then all it's just a question of working this soil in from above. Especially down here next to his neck. I, I say a he. I suppose it could be a, a female, but... The original statue by Rodan was a male. So I think of it as a as a man. And there we go. He's buried. You can see the tree. It's in a nice position. It's got soil going right up to the base of the tree, which is perfect in terms of keeping it nice and healthy and I won't do anything with this now I'll just let this grow all year because I want this to put out as many roots as possible to stay nice and healthy and in the future I'm, I'm pretty sure that this branch here will be removed because it's a bit bit sort of straight and ugly and up and down and this will add some really nice taper to the top of the tree but I would never dream of removing it now because you know, that's that's like 50%. Well, it's about 35% of the tree, so there's no way I'll take that off. I'll be updating you on this tree in the spring when it hopefully comes into leaf and is nice and healthy. It'll be included in one of my update videos that I'm going to be doing. As always, thanks for joining me. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.